All right, the first thing I want to do is run RS Links Classic just to verify that I'm communicating with the PLC. So there's a program for that. And what we're looking for here is the IP address. It's something worth recording as well. So I click on this button where it says AB, Allen Bradley Ethernet IP. So expand on that, expand on this, expand in the black backplane. And what you see are all the attached modules. 00, 0 is the controller, 0, 01 is the digital input, 0, 02 is the digital output. This is an analog IO module and the ethernet module. So I've confirmed that they're all there. You should also record the IP address for your station. At my station, it's 192.168.0.3. Okay, and you can minimize that now. The second step is to load the software, RS Logix 5000. Okay, it should find it in the list. And it's version 20.04. Takes a few seconds to open up, but it does. And I'm going to close this quick start off. We're not going to need this at the beginning. And right now it doesn't actually have any programs. So I'm going to be giving you a basic template for the PLC and I can open that up. And I have it under um, directory on my N drive called Basic Simulator I.O. Test. And it has to be the one for T228, which is this one. Okay, I open that up. I'm going to check that the program is there. Seems to be there. Has all of the tags required. And if I want to look at the list of tags that we're going to use now and in the future, I go to Program Tags. And these are all the tags here. All right, so that seems to work. The other thing that I want to confirm here is that I see the three modules, or two modules, the input and the output and the controller, which is in slot zero. So the input is slot one, output is slot two. The other thing that's important to check for is this IP address here. It's the communications path to the PLC, which is at 192.168.0.3. And this is for T228. CA219B is a little bit different. So go back to the main routine. And I'm just going to verify that you can actually run this and we can test it out as well. So you have to go into where it says offline. Click on this tab and go to download. And click on download. You should see this green bar moving along. Select yes when that occurs. And just verify that it's in run mode. So you have three green boxes here. That the IO is okay, the controller is okay, and we're in run mode, actually called remote run. And since we're using base tags, I can actually do something here to test this line out. I can uh, right click on that instruction, toggle the bit, and you should see the output change as well. And if I want to change that again, just toggle the bit. It's a quick test that the program is running and working okay. So now that we have that set up, I'm going to go to the next program that's required, and that's called Factory Talk View Studio. So click on that. This opens up, and uh, once it's open, we have to load a, a certain machine edition application, and it's not going to be in this list right away. So what I have to do is go to Tools, Application Manager, and then do restore application. This is going to retrieve an application that we have stored on our N drive. And I'll be giving this to all the students. So I'm gonna to go to my N drive. I have it in this directory. 
2228 labs and it's called plc underscore io underscore fall 2020 so click on that click on next finish takes a few seconds And what this is doing is placing that file into directory that can read, sorry, be read by uh, Factory Talk View Studio. And this has all of our HMI graphics. Okay, so it's done now. Um, it seems like it's not done, but just click cancel here and then go to file, open application now you do see that file so click on that it's going to open it up this takes a few seconds as well okay now that seems to be stable We'll give it another second. Okay, I'm going to open up RS Links Enterprise to check the configuration. Okay, um, one of the things that you're going to have to confirm is I'm going to click over here and and I'm going to click on the processor right here, which is slot zero. Now notice down at the beginning, it says press apply button to assign selected path to shortcut. If you don't choose the correct line, it'll say select a different path. So it must be on the controller. Don't worry about the name. This is really just from the previous user. And it should say 1756-L61 if you're in T228. Once that's all set up, click apply and yes. And then the same thing for copy from design to runtime and yes. And the other thing that's very important that you may forget to do, but it's important is clicking OK. Okay. And once you've done that, what you're doing is linking the PLC with the software in the HMI. So now I'm going to go to the displays and the one that we want to run to test the basic IO is called lab IO panel. So click on that and this is the IO panel very similar to what you would see in CA219 and even in CA uh, or sorry T228 and click on the run button now one of the things you'll notice is that you should click on each of the buttons to test them out before you start running your program but everything seems to work okay if i move switch four it turns on out four if i move switch six out six seven eight and so on they all seem to work okay so test that push button this push button that one now the red buttons have been configured as normally closed and the green buttons as normally open. And these sliders here are when we do some analog interfacing. And I don't have uh, the code in the program to modify the bar graph and these variables. So that's why it's not working. The slider works, but the output to these don't because my program doesn't include that. So hopefully that's a, a good introduction how you set up the virtual HMI panel.